Pops and Donnie Caposin' them, you know, Bill. Oh, sure. Is this all I am, Bill? Sure, what else would I be delivering in a P-38? Oh, Johnson. Frank Roberts, sports. Oh, is he in now? Thanks. So Johnson guys. Shh. The boss. Oh, hello, Mr. Weldon. This is Frank Roberts. I'd like to see you. I think I have a great idea for a new column. Yes, sir. I'll be in right away. Bill Johnson got his draft papers today. You mean our Bill Johnson downstairs? You make a good soldier. Soldier? He wants to get in the Navy. Then he'll make a good sailor. Boom. Come in. Hello, Frank. Hello, Mr. Weldon. Sit down. Thank you. What's this great idea? You know the serviceman's notes column I've been doing once a week? Yes. I think this new idea will be better because it has a different slant. A different slant? What do you mean? Sports are pretty close to your heart, aren't they, Mr. Weldon? Yes, you know that. What strikes you most about them? I mean, what's the one thing that most sports have in common? I think any schoolboy could answer that one. Teamwork. Exactly. Teamwork. Teamwork and the complete democracy of it. And the fact that a man is measured only by his ability and skill. Yes, that's right. Now, you've seen some great white teams and some great colored teams. And some with both whites and Negroes as teammates. Yes, I have. Well, I want to write a column about a great team like that. Look, I have tickets for something interesting this afternoon. Come out with me and I'll show you what I mean better than I can tell you. I'd like to, Frank, but I'm too busy. Mr. Weldon, you're not that busy. This is important. Well, if you think it's important, I suppose I could. Come in. Hello, Bill. Hello, Mr. Weldon. Hello, Frank. Hello, Bill. Mr. Weldon, I got my induction papers. So they finally arrived. We'll certainly miss you around here, Bill. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'd like a couple of days off. There's some things I'd like to do for Mom before I leave. Take as many days as you want. Thank you. Just a minute, Bill. Could you spare me a couple of hours? Well, I don't know. I, I think you can help me sell something. Mr. Weldon and I are going to a spot where three is better company than two. I'd like you to be the third. Where's that? Secret. Tell you at two o'clock. fighting together for one goal. But I'm thinking of a much greater team. One that's playing in the most important game of all. That team is the United States Navy. That's the team I hope to get on. And if you make it, Bill, you'll be right in there along with Bob, and Ole, Tony, Pedro, and Lee, and Joe. All of them fighting together. Now that's the kind of teamwork that I'd like to make the backbone of my new column. That is an idea. Let's call it on the Navy team. Bill made the Navy team all right. I got the column started right after that day at the game. Material came from many sources, but Bill Johnson was and still is my best correspondent. I wanted to see things through his eyes. I wanted the column to be a sort of case history of what actually happened to Bill. His first letter came shortly after he arrived at boot camp. He found that it wasn't easy when they take all your clothes away, everything but your toothbrush, and ship them home, and push you along in an assembly line, and check you for everything under the sun. It wasn't easy for Bill or for the thousands before him, or the other thousands of all races and creeds who will come after him. And this isn't easy either. Ouch! Two down and seven to go. He found shopping quite easy in the Navy. In the old days, it used to take him longer to pick a new suit. It was hard to make up his mind whether he wanted the brown suit with the small check 
or the gray suit with the stripes. But Bill doesn't have to worry about that now. Here, everything comes in standard colors and patterns. Blues with white stripes and whites with blue stripes. And the salesman behind this counter won't take no for an answer. Probably never again in his life will Bill receive nine suits of clothing and everything that goes with them in 20 minutes. All right. You're members of a new company, Company 510. And by the looks of you, Company 510 is about the finest collection of knuckleheads ever hit any boot camp. You're here for discipline. And I'm here to see that you get it. If you step out of line, you'll think this building fell on you personally. Pay attention and obey orders. First, you shave and shower every day. You keep your clothes washed and clean and rolled. And your bunks made up and your blankets folded properly. I'll show you how to do all that. Now get on the ball and stay on it. Company 510 got on the ball, but had a little difficulty staying on it. Close order drill isn't mastered in a day. said to the rear. Shoes out of line. Loose rolls. Loose rolls. You'd better learn to tie a square knot, sailor. Most of these are grannies. I'll see that he does, sir. What's an ensign? Well, uh, uh, you are the flag. Uh, both of you are. It means a commissioned officer. It also means the flag, sir. Bill never worked so hard in his life. To bed at nine and up at five. And every minute of the day on the go. He soon found that the training for this team is tough. It's got to be. The game is too important to lose. Gradually, Company 510 got squared away, and their chief stopped calling them knuckleheads. They began to act Navy, think Navy, and look Navy. It wasn't all tough. There was ship service, with the biggest malts in the world for a dime. Or a big hunk of cake and three scoops of ice cream for 15 cents. And noise. You've never heard noise till you've been in a ship service. There was ping pong. And the happy hour, which wasn't so happy for some guys. And there was some work that wasn't so tough. It didn't quite tie in with cargo nets and physical fitness and Marlin Spike seamanship, but there it was. And who was billed to refuse an invitation to the dance? Another thing Bill found out was that the Navy has rules, and Navy rules must not be broken. Furthermore, these rules apply to everybody. Break the rules and you land in the brig. That's Navy discipline. And discipline is the foundation of teamwork. Bill didn't exactly like swabbing decks, but he had company. Bob was swabbing decks, too. And Pedro had time to think it over. While Ole got a course in sweeping. And Lee never forgot his painting lesson. After that trip to the brig, Bill got wise. He found by reading the articles for the government of the United States Navy that being a member of the Navy team means certain real responsibilities. Not only for him, but for all the rest. From the recruits right on up to the very top. And he found out something else. Something that opened his eyes to real teamwork. Something about Stewart's mates and their place on the team. Doris Miller, Stewart's mate, first class, USN for his distinguished devotion to duty, extraordinary courage, and disregard for his personal safety during the attack on Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941, the Navy Cross.
Albert H. Oliver, steward's mate, first class, USN, for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity while serving aboard a United States warship during a raid upon that vessel by approximately 25 Japanese torpedo planes in the vicinity of the Solomon Islands on June 30th, 1942, the Silver Star Medal. William Pinckney, cook, third class, USN, for extraordinary heroism while serving aboard the USS Enterprise during the engagement with enemy Japanese naval forces near the Santa Cruz Islands on October 26, 1942, the Navy Cross. Leonard Roy Harmon, steward's mate, first class, USN, for extraordinary heroism while serving aboard the USS San Francisco during action against enemy Japanese forces in the Solomon Islands area on November 12th and 13th, 1942, the Navy Cross, a fighting ship named for a fighting man. And there are hundreds of others, like this lad on the Franklin, who had a job to do and did it. And I thought Stewart's mates were just waiters. Well, Johnson, you might call them that, but they're fighting men too. Between battles, their work is rather dull. But somebody has to be a waiter, or a cook, or a storekeeper. Everybody can be captain on a ship. But when you get the ship to where she's ready for the job she was built for, when you're there in battle, what you did before doesn't count anymore. What matters now is what you do in battle. Like your ship. That's your main job, fighting. And believe me, when it comes to fighting, the steward's mates are right in there with the rest of them. That's real teamwork, sir. You bet it is. And because their primary job is fighting, Stewart's mate's instruction includes standard courses in airplane and ship recognition, ship compartmentation, and gunnery. I'm glad you told me all that, sir. It makes me proud just to be anywhere on the team. And Johnson, don't ever forget this about Stewart's mates. They may pour soup between battles, but in battle they pour lead with the best of them. And so Company 510, now U.S. Navy fighting men, passes in review for the last time. Bill's recruit days are almost over. Those few crowded tough weeks have been lived through. He and his buddies have learned the basic rules of the game. Now some will go direct to general service duty while others will specialize and enter service schools. Company 510 will be scattered far and wide as the men continue their various careers, each to take his special position on the team for the big plays ahead. Bill was selected for quartermaster training at the U.S. Naval Training School, Hampton, Virginia. He felt pretty good about Hampton because training for quartermaster was a step up on the team. Here the trainees are mustered and checked in and receive a brief outline of the particular rules at Hampton. This chance was something Bill had hoped for, but you don't graduate just for the hoping. You have to earn it. Until now, a boy was just something floating around in the water. But Bill soon learned that there were quite a few different types of boys, each with a different purpose. He had to become as familiar with them as with his own name. But that was only a small part of it. Among other things, Bill learned how to make compass deviation compensations, how to navigate by dead reckoning, and how to plot a course. what a mercurial barometer is, how to set it, how to take readings, for the barometer is the sailor's watchdog. Bill also learned how to use the engine room telegraph. On this training ship, Bill and his shipmates put to actual use what they have learned in classes. Give her a little left runner. Easy now.
Just a touch. Right rudder. That's it. Ease your rudder. That's fine. So while Bill is on his way to becoming a quartermaster, other Bills, Tonys, Bobs, and Pedros are on their way to becoming radio men, aviation metalsmiths, aviation machinist mates, gunner's mates, and other specialists, and getting ready to take their places patrolling, signaling, mine sweeping. along with a thousand and one other jobs that go to make up the Navy team. Photographer's mate, who wears the Purple Heart, has flown many missions over enemy territory in the Pacific, doing map work under hazardous conditions. When completed, these mosaic maps furnish one of the most essential factors in battle planning. This skipper commands a Navy oiler. And this chaplain counsels and advises the boys on many subjects. While these waves have released men for duty in combat areas. The next time I heard from Bill, he wrote me that he had been ordered to duty aboard a destroyer escort, manned by a predominantly Negro crew. Right, 10 degrees rudder. Right, 10 degrees rudder, sir. Steady as you go. Steady as you go, sir. Come right to zero eight four. Right to zero eight four, sir. Bill's on the first team now, and ready to go into the game, along with these boys on the number three gun. And with Lyons and Johnson, lookouts. And with Arsenal, Bosun's mate first, who is right on the job. And with Dufal, signalman first, who can talk across the water with lights and with the radar gang, who can smell trouble a long ways off, and with radio men Coleman and Graham, electrician's mate Bales, chief motor machinist mate Smith, and sound man Thompson, who can listen and tell you whether it's a shark or a sub or just a lonely mermaid. These and more are on the same team with Bill. It may be only practice. You never can tell. All engines ahead flank. All engines ahead flank, sir. All engines ahead acid flank, sir. Very well. Come right to 110. Right to 110, sir.
Even the boys on the D.E. are throwing up a lot of stuff out there. But like the quarterback who kicks the goal... Someone has to pass them the ball. The Navy would only be a collection of harmless ships if it were not for the men who furnish the guns of our fleets, their tremendous smashing power. Every ship at sea, every plane in the air, depends on the men of the ordnance battalions. These are the wrappings for the prescriptions about to be filled by the doctors of dynamite who mix the first ingredients. Yes, doctors of dynamite is a good name for them. and their prescriptions come in all sizes and shapes. Men who do this make it possible to do this and this. The teammates on some cruiser will welcome these eight inch projectiles and speed them on their way. While the 14 and 16 inch shells are destined for some battleship to help knock out the enemy. Yes, every sailor plays a vital position to make this team the greatest navy in the world. This is the result of teamwork. Here, moving in for the payoff in the biggest game of all, battle and invasion, here on these ships, on the APAs, on the ATAs, on the AKAs, on the AOs, and all the other great auxiliary ships of the fleet. Here serve the Negro sailors like the Bill Johnsons. Here serve Negro electricians mates, radio men, stewards mates, quartermasters, yeomen, and all the other ratings required to man these ships that help to make up the great team. Landing come the Seabees, and there are plenty of Bill Johnsons in the Seabees, building roads behind the Japs, flattening out the jungle, fighting with bulldozers and tools, and putting down airstrips in a hurry. Often they have to take time out to dodge death. send it back. So the Bill Johnsons made all the Navy teams. They were there at the end of the first half when these German U-boats surrendered in the Atlantic. And they were there at the finish in the Pacific. Yes, they made all the Navy teams. This one, and this one, too. Throughout our history, Americans of all races and origins have fought side by side in defense of their country. Since the first battle of the Revolution, when our country was born, through more than 160 years, through all our wars, colored Americans like the Bill Johnsons of today have fought and died to bring victory to our arms.